What is climate change? Climate change can simply be defined as changes in the weather pattern that occur and last for long periods of time due to various reasons, mostly caused by human factors. Climate change ne 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 imekuwa sababu ya ukosevu wa miti. Kitu cha kwanza ni ukataji wa miti, yani uchomaji wa makaa kama milima yetu tumefangilia miti tumekata kukawa hakuna miti ya kufuta mfua tunakata kichaka tukitengeneza shamba tukichoma hiyo kichaka sasa hiyo moshi ikienda juu ina inaribu the ozone layer kwa hivyo atupati ile mfua inayo stahili the two major factors for climate change are increasing desertification and pollution these factors, which influence climate change, poses a danger to human existence all over the world, no matter your gender. One thing you will realize, and uh, it's, this is a very new emerging thing, is that uh, normally in the climate change discourse, the issue of gender was not so much being discussed. But it is now evident that climate change is affecting different genders differently, in that in our day-to-day -day lives, and especially in the marginalized communities and the, uh, the grassroots communities, the different roles that our different genders play are impacted by climate change in different ways. Kenya is uniquely vulnerable to the ravages of climate change as it experiences two adverse climatic changes, long drought periods and long rains, mostly known as the El Nino rains. The impacts of climate change are, however, not evenly distributed. As much as it affects humanity, it is not gender neutral. This is because climate change is occurring in a world where poverty and gender inequality are present. Therefore, there are differentiated impacts and responses of climate change among women and men. <laughs> Sasa wanaenda kujota karibu kilomita tano na kurudi nyumbani ni usiku. Na watoto wakati mwingi wanalala na njaa. Sababu tuki, nikienda kwa kibarua nikipata kilo moja haitoshi kwa, kwa familia. While Kenya and Africa as a whole is at the low end among countries contributing to climate change, 3% to be exact, Kenya is at the receiving end of those most affected by global warming and other impacts of climate change. The country's low adaptive capacity is caused by a number of factors such as widespread poverty, HIV and AIDS, a high dependence on agriculture production and inequitable land distribution. Income yangu napata kwa shamba, hii mpwe kinini ikipotea, si sasa naanza kuwa na mafikira mengi. In the past years we used to have rains, but nowadays we do not have. And the crops will grow. We used to grow means and uh, for a few, one to three years back, we grew means, but it couldn't do well. The changes in rainfall, river flows and storm patterns have created some of the biggest climate change impacts being felt by communities that affect both genders in different ways. In the eastern part of Kenya, Katalwa in the county of Mwingi, nearly 200 kilometers from Nairobi, has experienced prolonged dry spells for the last decade, leaving the residents with dry riverbeds, poor crop yields, and inadequate water for livestock and for domestic use. Jane Katindi, a mother of five, knows only too well the effects of drought. She has to go a longer distance in search of water for both her family and her livestock. Her farm is also at the receiving end of the drought. This takes most of her time and she's unable to engage in other productive and communal activities. Mama wakati wanakuja kuchota maji hapa, wanakuwa na shida ya, ya muendo mrefu kutoka kwa manyuba zao. Na pia haya maji anatumua na watu, ngombe, mbuzi ama watu na mifugo. The men too have not been spared the wrath of the climate change impacts. While women have to walk longer distances for water and men have to walk further or migrate to look for casual employment. Inanimbiti nitoroke nyumbani niende kutafuta kama kibarua mbali. Na mwenyewe hata akiniambia fanya hii kibarua bila chakula nitapumilia ili nipate chakula pesa kidogo nipelekee watoto wangu nyumbani. 
33-year-old David Munyoki's predicament is almost similar to what his age mates in Nairobi are facing nearly 200 kilometers away in Nairobi. Wakati wa kiangazi kunakuwa na njaa mingi sana. Na na vumbi. Sasa maisha inakuwa ngumu sana. Na wakati wa mvua kunakuwa na mafuriko inapeleka manyumba. Sasa saa zingine hata watoto hawezi enda shule. The situation is the same in the county of Kitui in Mutomo, where 70 year old Joseph Mutinda and his wife are digging up a dam in anticipation of the rain, which they're not sure if it will fall or not. However, the affected people have come up with various ways of adaptation. <laughs> When disaster strikes, vital resources like food and water are always impacted and pressure on limited resources often leads to increasing conflict. Wazishi Water Resource Users Association was formed back in 1998 and the thing that actually triggered the formation of this rule was because of the conflicts that were between the downstream people, the mainstream and the upstream users. People really fought and there were a lot of livestock that was dying because and also one life that could not get water at that moment. So there was a lot of livestock dying there. So many crops of people were destroyed as the, as the commune pastoral rates went up to look for the resource. So there was a lot of destruction, I can say, before a common agreement was arrived to. With the damage climate change is doing to crops, many of the country's poorest people who are dependent on agriculture are finding their meager incomes further reduced. <laughs> Nafungiwa miti mbili na ni shilingi tano. Sasa na kushilingana sisi ni watu wa gaza ya chini ya tuna mapato. Sasa zingine hata tutapika hiyo wa shilingi tano. Na tuweke supu na tunaendere ya tuna maisha. Pesa hakuna. Kile kandoko napata na kimbisa kwa nduka na ya chakula hiko njuu sana. It has a direct impact on women and children's lives due to the domestic work and makes their everyday sustenance even more difficult. Thus, most of them have come up with sustainable projects to make it easy for them during the harsh weather conditions. In Bungoma, Mama Priska Mayenda planted crops that take a short while to be ready for harvesting and planted trees to take out the carbon in the atmosphere. She has utilized all her land by planting maize. Hapa sasa, mfua ikinyesha, sasa shamba hili nilashika vizuri kwa sababu ya hii miti ikondani. Ili shamba langu ni vile nimesema eka tatu na 3.8 e, na nimepanda ndani miti elefu ine na mia sita. Semu hii yenye mnaona kwa hiyo line tukona Saspania, tukona Gruveria, tukona Croton na tukona Kodia. Zimeenda mbaka the other end. Na Saspania ni short term tree. Ikimaliza mwaka moja na tunatoa. Na sana sana inatusaidia kwa kuni. Mchele hii e, nilijaribu kupanda last year na kweli inafanya vizuri. Mchele wenye inaitwa Nerika 11. Ni upland rice. This is with the help of knowledge she got from VI Agroforestry which seeks to educate farmers on how to achieve the best yields under the climatic changes. A farmer has also to be aware that it can rain or maybe do not rain. And based on the history of the trends, a farmer should be able to, to tell either if this year it will rain uh, as usual or not. If it will not rain as usual, then a farmer should be advised to go for uh, crop varieties that can take a shorter time. If maybe it is going to rain uh, too much, then we have to be aware of the issue of erosion, we have to be aware of the issues of, of floods. So I can say like via, via agroforest at the moment, what we are doing, we are putting the farmer in the context of the changing climate so that planning is also done in that context so that interventions that are undertaken have some resilience to the effects of the changes that is anticipated. But we are also encouraging farmers that apart from their indigenous knowledge, they should also really embrace new technology 
they should also seek information from the meteorological department, which can also help them in planning, because that is the only way that we can help in, a, in, a, in adapting. The changes in workload suggest that disasters increase women's responsibilities in the domestic scene and in many paid and unpaid workplaces, in the formal and informal sectors, and in the community during the stages of preparation and mitigation, as well as the reconstruction stage. There are so many historical factors that come into play that will um, work against um, implementing particular um, programs or particular strategies. One of them still, which is really high ranking, is education. Illiteracy is still one of the greatest factors that contribute towards um, vulnerability of men and women. And especially women, because when you look at statistics, women, the literacy rates amongst women are highest globally. You also have to address uh, factors of, um, of access to um, information. Even if you're illiterate, if you're literate, you must have access to the information and that is very important in terms of understanding that these are the variations in terms of the information if you want to know about the proper times to plant, um, the impacts of um, flooding and all that. You need to have that um, access to that information. That's also a hindrance. Um, the other is when it comes to um, ownership of land and this particularly affects um, women in the sense that uh, you still have areas, countries where the landlords um, do not recognize ownership of land by women and yet you find that their adaptation strategies which are really targeting um, agriculture and when you have um, adaptation uh, mechanisms and strategies that are focusing on proper land use and you want to target the owner or the rightful owner of that land then you have problems if the rightful owner is not the woman. So you see the landlords have to start looking at how, how these um, discriminatory practices are actually contributing towards um, um, vulnerability of particular communities. Statistics indicate that 50 million more people will be forced into hunger by 2050 due to climate change. About 75% of that number will be in Africa. Something needs to be done soon. In order to address climate change, issues, particularly with respect to equity and proper development, mainstreaming of gender in climate change governance is essential for effective mitigation and adaptation responses to climate change. The status of gender equality is one of the factors that determine the vulnerability context. Women's vulnerability to climate change needs to be researched so that solutions meet the specific needs on this already marginalized group in society. Appropriate interventions can be put in place to reduce the impacts of climate change. This can be achieved by educating women and men about the impacts as well as ways to reduce the impacts of climate change. You need to go into what is it that people do and how does what they do contribute towards um, climate change, whatever it is, if it is um, deforestation, why is it that they are doing that and what can you do to prevent that and to reduce the rates of deforestation? Who is doing what? Um, we cannot say that it's only men who cut trees or it's only women who cut trees, for example. They do it for different purposes. So let us look at what people do and how what they do impacts, agree, um, contributes towards climate change and thereafter develop. Um, they, they look at the different coping mechanisms that they, that they can actually adapt to. Men must also find another means of making a living within the rural setting. In contrast to the options open to many men, men respond to drought by relocating to cities or other rural areas in search of work. One of such initiatives is a project run by 29-year-old Avia Chalo, Kwata Oaku self-help group, who taps water from the ground and pipes it to his small farm and the result is amazing. Through loan, ni kwa the machine, water pump ya kazi ya kibone. Na elawo oje ambone plan izu ni none zimba ilu. Na edi na wa kunenga loan izu. Ino oje na ambililewe ya wanyu wa wimi wampoka. The agriculture and transport sectors are the country's main sources of emissions. 
However, full studies on low carbon options and the development of new strategies could mitigate against the effects of global warming. Providing extension services to women farmers on appropriate technological innovations, improved storage facilities and resource management services is also key to stemming the impact of climate change on women. It is a hard task, but optimism is mandatory or else nothing will change.